All right, everyone, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hotfix where we bring spooky games to you every two weeks. Hope you're all doing good today. Before I begin, I do want to say that AGDQ 2023 Online we held from January 8th to the 15th, and game submissions and event volunteer applications are currently open until September 24th. Uh, feel free to head over to gamesdonequick.com uh, for more information on this. Anyway, I hope you're all doing good and I hope you're all having a wonderful night. Uh, tonight, we're going to be looking at some uh, truly tormented games. I really think the word tormented is cool and honestly, that just felt like a cool theme. So I picked two games that have the word tormented in them, uh, which is Fatal Frame 3, uh, Torment, The Tormented, I think it's just called, and Tormented Souls. Uh, we have some great runners, some great games, and honestly, some fun challenges considering our first game already is going to be uh, going in some pretty deep territory right off the bat. Uh, anyway, I'll have her tell us more about the category once we get there, but our first run will be Fatal Frame 3 The Tormented with Ms. Scarlet Tanager. So take it away. Hello! So yes, a little bit of a challenge because I decided on my own that I was going to do this run on Nightmare, but I am doing it on New Game Plus, so there's that at least. Um, yeah, Fatal Frame 3 is... <laughs> It is probably t a little bit less than twice as long, I think, than the other speedruns for the two games previous to it. But it is kind of fortuitous that we're going to be playing this game, seeing as uh, the announcement of the fourth one finally getting released. But yeah, my name is Miss Scarlet Tanger, and we're let's just get right into it. There's no use just sitting around. All right, time starts in three, two, one, go. All right, so <laughs> Fatal Frame it 3 is sort of Survivor's Guilt the video game, if that makes sense. All of the three characters that you play as, Rei Kurosawa, Miku Hinasaki, which if you know Fatal Frame, you know that name very well, and uh, Kei Amakura, they all have dealt with, in their personal lives, a death in the family. And because of that, the powers that be, aka the Fatal Frame World, have decided that they get to go into a spooky mansion in their sleep and have spooky things happen to them in the spooky mansion. They are being tormented in their dreams, you could say. So the beginning isn't supposed to make too, too much sense, especially because I skipped the cutscenes, because we don't watch cutscenes, cutscenes are slow. But we are currently playing as Ray who is investigating a spooky mansion, but in the daytime, with her assistant, Miku, when she sees some things out of the corner of her eye and decides to go chase after them. Namely, her fiance, who died in a car crash. That, a car crash that Ray herself was the driver of, so she feels a lot of guilt about that. Which, this game deals very heavily in that sort of thing. But, oh, come on. Don't turn around, right? So one thing you have to be careful with um, when you're running this game is if you flick the controller too quickly, your character will do 180 when you don't want them to. So what I did just then is a glitch called Stairskate. And if you know Fatal Frame very well, at least the original three, you know Stairskate. So Sirisky is done a bit differently in Fatal Frame 3 than it is in 1 and 2. You can't just mash the run button in order to go faster downstairs. You have to flick the controller to the left or to the right as you're going down the stairs. And then you have to keep holding the direction. You can't use the um, uh, run ability that... I'm not holding the thumbstick right now. All you have to do is hold the run button to go forward usually. But when you're doing the stair gate glitch in this game, you have to be using the directional button on the stairs at least. So it's not as useful when you're going up and down shorter stairs. I'm, you're only going to see me doing it when I'm on longer stairs. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I just know that it's faster and that it bugs out the animation for going up and down stairs, which is pretty nice. All right, so we woke up from the spooky, spooky dream of spookiness, and then we went immediately back to sleep. So what you're going to see is that this game is split into sort of two sections. You have the sleeping sections in the manner of sleep, and you have the awake time sections, 
where you're playing as Ray running around her house. So, there we go. Okay. And right now we are still stuck in the mansion. We haven't even seen the house just yet. But Ray is just there. That's the that's the little bit of a the movement glitch I was talking about. If you accidentally hit the control stick too quickly. Yes. Okay, Ray. So sometimes the game decides it just wants to take away control from you for no reason. It does that. Don't worry about it. Now there will be a smaller glitch that I'm going to be showing off later on. Hopefully, if I can pull it off, it's a little bit. The input for it is a little bit trickier. It can actually cause you to wrestle control back from the game when it does these little segments where you can't move even though you're not in a cutscene. There are two places I found the, that glitch useful, and they're both in Sword of the Lake game, but just keep that in mind for later. Alright. We're still just following the little sounds that we hear. Going through the spooky mansion. We don't know why we're here. Everything is fine, except everything's not fine. We just skipped a jump scare because we're not about that life. This is Yoshi. Everybody say hi to Yoshi. She is not a green dinosaur, sadly, but she is Yoshi and we like Yoshi. Nothing bad's gonna happen to Yoshi. Go away! Because Yoshi is not a ghost. He is actually another person stuck in the mansion, just like us. For now. But yes, we are going to go chase down Yoshi because another living person in the creepy, spooky mansion. We gotta go chase down Yoshi. But sadly, we can't just get to Yoshi just yet because we have our first boss fight. And by boss fight, I mean dead. <laughs> so that is the benefit of playing this game on New Game Plus. I am on Nightmare Difficulty. This is the most difficult difficulty in the game. Yet I was able to one-shot the first mandatory ghost. That is almost entirely because of two things in the game. You have the festival lens, which is an attachment for your camera that you can really only get in New Game Plus, and the fact that I have a massively overpowered camera with a lens called the... No, with an ability called the Crush Lens. Now, with these two things, I no longer use film when I shoot the camera. And at the same time, I use an ability that I think it ripples my damage output. So because of that, even though I'm on nightmare difficulty, I'm going to be one-shotting most things in this game up until I think three quarters of the way through, which in some ways makes this game quite easy to learn. Difficult to master, but easy to learn. Especially because this game is available still on the PlayStation 3 PSN, I believe. And I saw a question in chat. This is indeed the same runner who does Kiwan. Oh! <laughs> Don't mind me, I was talking too much. I forgot to go get the film. So I took a picture of Yoshi when I was in the Manor of Sleep, and we have to go now get that piece of film. Because even though we took a picture of that film in the dream world, for some reason, it appears in the real world. And now we have to go get that and develop it, because Ray here is a photographer, and Miku, the protagonist of Fail Frame 1, is her assistant. Who lives with her for some reason? Reasons. And no, we are not going to be dropping Yoshi into a bottomless pit like you would in Mario. This is true. You know, that is kind of interesting that they had Mario, a Mario game right before this. <laughs> it does give me a chuckle. All right, now we just have to go all the way back to where I was just a moment ago. And the cat teleported. That's weird. Usually the cat doesn't teleport. Cat went from the couch to the upstairs. Game's haunted. Game is, um, that is fair. <laughs> so that is an interesting um, thing that you bring up. The house itself is haunted progressively. 
So sort of like in uh, Silent Hill for the room, the more you play the game, the more haunted the house gets, though not quite as dramatically as in Silent Hill 4. But we're not going to be seeing most of the hauntings because that would be slow. But I will point them out when I see them. All right, so we have now, uh, we have now gotten the photograph all developed, and now we're gonna give it to Miku because Miku's job in this game is to be our researcher. Because for some, I think she was the originally the assistant of Ray's fiance. Yes, yes, yes. The camera at the save point. We don't care. We're going to sleep. Every time you go to sleep, you end the day phase, and you go into the night phase. You don't have to worry about being attacked during the day phase pretty much at all. Um, the only time I think there is any combat during the day phase is not actually during the main game, it's during the optional combat uh, arenas you can go into. Also, don't mind the rabbits behind me, they're going to be running around, that's what they do. So we're chasing down Yoshi. Still. Because Yoshi is still a person, and we still want to go say hi to her. Because we like Yoshi. For now. We might not like her so much later. So, <laughs> I just saw somebody mention in the GDQ chat that this reminds them of the Ring Terror's Realm. Ekdysis, what do you think about that? <laughs> Oh god, the ring of the <laughs> realm. I mean, it is one of the games of all time. <laughs> the person who said it as well, I know very well they know about the ring. Mm -hmm. I've been meaning to learn that speedrun as well, I because I do have a Dreamcast. Um, it's just getting your hands on it. Play a cutscene, show rabbits. Nah, cutscenes are slow. We skip cutscenes. You'll be able to see them in the background being cute, just like during my Kuan run. All right. So what you just saw is the way the game does some of its unlocking. So other games have keys. This game also has keys, but it also has the camera unlock mechanic. So in some areas you'll come across a door that is locked with a spooky ghostiness on it because it's a spooky game. Now you take a picture of that door and it shows you another place. Go to the place that was in the photo, take a picture there, and it unlocks. So this is a ghost lady. She's going to be spooky in this hallway. We're just going to leave her. We don't need her. We're going to go this way. Because this door was locked, it is now not locked because I went and took another picture elsewhere. So the camera is both useful for combat and or unlocking doors. Alright, everybody say hi to Yoshi. We have actually found her. Hooray. Except Yoshi's not having the best time. We're just gonna take her passport, because we're rude like that, and we're gonna leave her. We found Yoshi, now we're gone. You should wake up. Yoshi's gonna mumble at us a bit. Yes, Yoshi, I hear you. Come on, let's go. We got places to be. Alrighty, so now we have woken up again. And now we have another daytime section. One thing that can take a little bit to learn when you're learning this game is what to do when during the daytime sections. Because I have not unfrequently thought I was on a different day than I was in which would cause me to try and go do something for the wrong daytime section. <laughs> which of course loses you time and we don't like doing that, that's slow. Losing time is slow. Hello? Ray, it's Miku. Okay. So 
we're getting a phone call from Miku. She's telling us about Yoshi, and we should go see Yoshi in the hospital because Yoshi's in a coma. Yoshi in the real world is in a coma. Yoshi in the mansion is not in a coma. So we went and saw Yoshi, and Yoshi was fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yoshi, Yoshi was fine. No, nothing, nothing very unfortunate happened in that cutscene. But part of this game is each one of the characters, due to their survivor's guilt, get pulled into the manner of sleep and they get cursed by the main ghost of the game, Reika. And over time, that curse slowly saps their ability to stay awake until they fall into a coma. Once they have fallen into a coma, they start getting actively chased by the main antagonist ghost, and if she catches them, uh, then they turn into a very unfortunate soot stain in the real world, and their body is gone, and they have now become a ghosty in the mansion. Which, yeah, I'm not going to be around the bush. That absolutely happened to Yoshi in the cutscene that I skipped there. So we're going to have to go deal with that. Right about now, because Yoshi... Yoshi is still exactly where we left her. Except she's a little bit worse for wear. Sorry. So we can't actually attack Yoshino yet until we get rid of these little ghost buddies around her. Come on. There's should be one more. There we go. And now I'm just going to do circles around Yoshi. There's no reason to do this. I just do it. Because you can't actually attack her until she stands up. <laughs> okay. So because of my nightmare, I'm going to wait a second. I did a regular attack. And then, is it going to work? Nope, decided not to. Okay. Sometimes you can get two shots in there quickly enough that you can take her out without having to do a third decided it didn't like me, but it's fine. She's gone. And that was the first actual boss in the game. And we're just going to skip that. Ray's going to have some hard time getting up. And we are back into the next daytime section. Now, for some reason, the game refers to the tattoo that starts appearing on your character's body throughout the game as a bruise. Even though everywhere else it's referred to as a tattoo. But. So we're just going to take all of this information from Miku. We sent her out on an errand. She went and did the errand for us. And now we're going to take her stuff. And that's the entire day or entire nighttime section. Now we're going to go back to bed. Now, if I really wanted to, I could run around the house some more and go find some spooky, spooky spooks. But again, that's slow, so we're not going to do that. So it looks like Yoshi left us a present. We're going to go pick up that present because we need it. This is very nice of her. Leave us a present. And as soon as I round this corner... Hi, Yoshi! Bye, Yoshi. Now, I'm going to need chat and everyone else to keep an eye out. Oh, I almost got hit there. Every single time you go into the awake world, from now on, there is some chances and areas that you're going to be able to see Yoshi in the house. Because now, until the end of the game, Yoshi is... Uh, possessing the house. There is something in my stream that I call Kitchen Yoshi. Every time she appears in the Yo or in the kitchen and you can see her, I say that the run is blessed and we're going to have a good run. So, just got to hope for Kitchen Yoshi. What happened to Yoshi? She got she got got. So, like I like I explained, the curse in the game is the tattoos start to spread over a person's body, and once they spread all the way, the person dies in the real world and becomes a ghost. That's what happened to Yoshi. 
The tattoo only really spreads when they get caught by the main antagonist, Ghost Reika. So sometime when uh, Ray was awake, Yoshi got got for the final time. I remember now. I remember this place. Sadly, there is no Mario in this game. There's only a Yoshi. Her name is actually Yoshino, but I never call her that. <laughs> I only ever call her Yoshi. In fairness, for my vague knowledge of Mario, isn't the popular meme that Mario's constantly killing Yoshi anyway? I mean, that's fair. <laughs> There's no good roads for Yoshi. No, not at all. All right, so we got some two ghosts here, and I do actually have to take out these ghosts. Most of the time, these particular ghosts are considered random ghosts, but these guys actually have a have a uh, puzzle item that I need. The other one's gonna appear right about there. I should have let him come forward a little bit further, but it is what it is. Come on. I got places to be. Unless he's going to uh, disappear and appear behind me. Oh, nope, there he is. Okay. And look, they had a present. We are going to take that present and we're going to go do a puzzle with it. Because yes, this game, of course, has puzzles. Thankfully, they're not as obtuse as the ones in Fatal Frame 1 can get. Shots fired a little bit there, but I have a hard time with Fatal Frame 1's puzzles sometimes. I'm just gonna skate up these stairs, chase this little ghosty, and do a puzzle. This one's an easy puzzle. You can move each one of the blocks the number of lines there is. So one line, you can move it twice, three lines, you can move it three times, and you have to get all of them to be able to uh, go to that little symbol, so be able to move the max amount of times without actually going backwards, which takes a little bit to wrap your head around, but once you get it, the puzzles are fairly easy to remember, at least. So each chapter has like, has a little bit of a sub goal that you're going that you're going towards. This one is we're just trying to get deeper in the mansion. The first half of the game is just slowly unlocking other parts of the mansion until you have the whole mansion functionally unlocked. The second half of the game is mostly just going around to collect things in the mansion to get to the final part of the game. Uh, all right, and there should be a ghosty goo. Hello. Man's being rude. Going into the wall. Thank you. And we're out. Or we're not. <laughs> there we go. If you are in a mandatory fight room, you can't actually leave it until you've killed the ghost. But even if you've done the final um, hit on the ghost, you have to wait for the ghost to vanish before it'll actually let you leave the room. Slightly annoying, but that is what it is. Alrighty. So now that we have killed both of those mandatory ghosts, you saw that I picked up a key. Now that room with all of the gravestones and all of the snow falling, that is the room that has the locked door I needed that key for. So we just have to go all the way back there and that will be the end of this chapter. Chapters in this game are called hours, not chapters because this game has to be special. That's a doorway. You gotta go through it, not just run into it. We unlock the door into the main area of the mansion. And that's the end of this chapter. You. As soon as Ray decides she wants to wake up. Because, of course, we have to wait for her little mini cutscene to go through before she actually wakes up. There we go. Now we're in another daytime section. Just running around doing errands in the house. There's a phone call. There's a kitty. I know that you can pet the cat. I, I've i never managed to actually figure out when and where you can pet the cat. Because Oh, oh, there we go, chat. Kitchen Yoshi. There's a ghost in the kitchen. 
The beginnings of the hauntings. I understand. Thanks. All right. Right, I have to go to... See, that little circle that I made there was just because I momentarily forgot which daytime section I was in. <laughs> but we gotta let the uh, cat in Amiko's room, because now we have permission to go in here. Hello, kitty. Bye-bye, kitty. All right, I'm gonna see... Will you let me... Will you let me do it? <sighs> you have to hold it. Ah! <gasps> no? Darn it. The cat doesn't want to say hi to us, chat. Okay. We'll, we'll say hi to the cat later. You can get the cat to actually nudge your hand and say hi, but apparently the cat doesn't want to say hi today. Yes, this is indeed a stair skating in heels. Though, to be fair, that's because I'm currently wearing one of the... Uh, Unlockable costumes because, like most Fatal Frame games, this game has quite a few costumes you can unlock. I'm not gonna lie, the idea of stair skating in heels just sounds like a, a <laughs> fancy version of falling downstairs. And... <laughs> That's a horrifying concept. It's fine. This place is. I mean, she's not like in real big heels. It's sort of like she's sort of wearing pumps. So, it's not, the, it's not the healiest heal that's ever healed. Alrighty, so we are going to immediately get attacked by a ghost. We're just going to run away from him, because fighting ghosts is slow. Now, like I said, the first few chapters here, we're just playing as Ray, trying to unlock most of the mansion. But very soon... In fact, I believe in the next chapter after Ray, um, in the next chapter after this one, we will be getting to see our second playable character. Because, as I mentioned, there's three of them. Most of the game you are playing is Ray, but you will be playing as two other characters, one of which y'all should recognize, especially because of the costume I put her in. This is not the original house in the first game, but you will be seeing parts of that mansion. Because one thing that Fatal Frame 3 did that I really liked is it actually does incorporate some specific rooms and buildings from Fatal Frame 1 and 2 into it. Because the manner of sleep is supposed to be sort of an amalgamation of people's like nightmares and dreams. So you will be seeing some very familiar locations if you know the other games. All right, don't worry about the fact that we currently have a monster here. He's fine. Ah, oh, darn it. Yeah. Just for safety's reasons, I'm going to kill. <laughs> yeah. That guy really likes to hit me. I've been able to dodge it before. It's just rather difficult. All right, so I'm not going to have much to say for a little bit here because we're just going to be backtracking all the way back to where I first took that picture of Yoshino through the little window thing way back in the beginning of the game. <laughs> because for some reason, the picture I need to take to unlock the door that I was just at is all the way back at the beginning. <laughs> so I guess considering we just have the uh, the walking all the way back, I guess I'll ask and wrap up our questions just as a general thing with many horror games. Uh, one thing I always wonder, and especially considering this run is uh, almost three hours, how difficult was it for you to kind of memorize the lay of the land or the map as a whole? Because I know they kind of restrict you in some areas, but especially during this chapter as the game progresses, they kind of want you in the whole manner, I think it's what it's called. Yeah, so yeah. how easy would you say it is to kind of like remember like, all right, I have to go this way. Oh, wait, no, that's bad. And all that. Uh, it, <laughs> it is, <laughs> it can be a little difficult. You guys already saw me uh, screw it up once towards the beginning when I went straight to the dark room instead of going to actually get the film that I needed to take to the dark room. 
because uh, you go into the dark room two times. You only have to go in there twice during the game. Uh, one, but you only have to get the film from the camera once. Um, but yeah, that's. I do love this speedrun, but it is a lot of trying to remember. Okay, where am I going? Which chapter am I in? <laughs> Which part of the game am I doing? Especially earlier on. Later in the game, it's actually a little bit easier to keep track of it because the game is a little bit forgiving. Um, in that, towards the beginning of the game, you're only in the inch entrance areas of the mansion or the manor. In the middle of the game, you're spending most of your time all throughout the manor. Toward the end of the game, you're only really spending your time in the uh, back sections of the manor, so you sort of don't have to worry about the entrance areas anymore, which makes it a little bit uh, easier to keep track. Though one thing that did take me some time was trying to figure out the fastest way to get through the mansion. Because if you look at the videos on speedrun.com, it seems like everybody has their own <laughs> way that they take to get from point A to point B. Now, I have spent some time trying to compare routes to get from point A to point B, and I think I figured out the fastest way for most times in the game or most sections to get from point A to point B. But it's still a lot to remember, especially because you are still going through the same areas as three different characters doing different things. Though the fact that it's as three different characters, it can be a little bit of a help. Because say you're going through one area of the mansion as Rey, and you go do one thing, and then the next chapter is in, from Miku's point of view in the same part of the manor. It's a little bit harder to get lost because you'll go, wait, I'm playing as Miku. I know Miku has to do this in this area. But it is definitely something that takes some repetition to get. Why? And I have to go all the way back to that original door that I took when I got hit by that very rude man with a cleaver. Oh, that is a wall, Ray. You can't go through walls, you're not a ghost. Of the Fatal Frame games, of all of them, and I have played all of them, even the, at least for now, Japanese-only Fatal Frame 4, this one is my favorite, by far. I know people tend to favor Fatal Frame 2, but this one has a soft spot in my heart. All right. The one thing to keep in mind about the stair skating in this game, because I just did it there for a second, if you try to do the stair skating glitch too early on the stairs, or you fail to flick the left or right correctly in order to actually get it to trigger, your character will decide instead of going faster down the stairs, she wants to go sluggishly slow down the stairs, which is annoying. Thankfully, it's easy to fix, but... That's another one of the reasons why I usually only do the stair glitch on longer stairs, not shorter ones. I am very excited for Fiddle Frame 4 to be coming out in English, finally. It should be exciting to see what runs it gets as well, because I know Fatal Frame 5 uh, ended up also having the re-release, and I think that brought a couple of runners for a minute. I do have Fatal Frame 5 on my list of runs I want to do, because its, it's structure seems a lot of fun for me, because it has a very similar structure to this game in an almost like level or chapter way. Because you have a very defined, this is your daytime section, then your nighttime section, daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime. And Fatal Frame 5 has somewhat of a similar daytime, nighttime thing going on. Alright, so now this door should be unlocked. And now we can just go get the key as soon as this little mini cutscene is done. I call these mini cutscenes because they're not actual cutscenes. And these are the ones that I'll be able to, hopefully if I can pull it off, bug out a little bit later. All right. Hello, 
there. How you doing? Goodbye. Yeah, I need to get the more powerful film. Okay. So when I run in circles like this, or walk in circles, I guess, it's me trying to figure out where the ghost is. Are you hurt? She's in my foot, isn't she? Yep, there she is. Yep. So here is another film to develop, but this film we don't actually ever have to develop, so I'm not going to. There is three mandatory films that you take in the game. Films like that, ones that actually go to the real world. And of them, you only ever have to actually develop two of them. Come on, game. There we go. All right, we are back in the daytime section. We now have some musty film that we're never going to do anything with. I wonder if the cat will let me pet them yet. Eventually I'll get the cat to let me pet them. All right, now we have a cutscene of Miku being creepy. He's very good at that. Now she sort of, you sort of realize at this point that Miku's having the same dreams that Rei's been having. And our next chapter will be playing as her. And she is still very, very sad and depressed and has survivor's guilt over her, over the death of her brother Mufuyu in the first game. Which, somebody, somebody in chat correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the confirmation of um, the canon ending of Fatal Frame 1. I can't remember if it gets confirmed in Fatal Frame 2, which ending was canon, but this game definitely confirms it. <laughs> oh, whoops. I went to the wrong way. And that is another example of me forgetting which day I'm on. So, really quick, because uh, I know how uh, the gameplay loop of Fatal Frame 3 works. Uh, normally, you have the daytime section where you have to do something, it goes to nighttime, at which point you want to get back to the dream as soon as possible. Yes. Um, if it doesn't already exist, um, is there a way to possibly skip a night? Because I know, like, uh, in some games, if you can get a certain <laughs> item that would activate, like, another chapter, in theory, you can activate that chapter earlier. I know in this game... I think like certain recordings and certain things might exist, but can you activate any of the nights earlier than uh, it should happen? Uh, no asterisks. <laughs> if you asterisks. guys want, if you guys want to see it, I will show off a specific glitch if I can get it to actually trigger. Um, that happens at night nine, I think. I think it's I think it's night um night night nine right before night ten. Um, as far as we know, there is no way to skip to a pre to another chapter. There's no way to skip nights, as far as we know. Now, I'm saying as far as we know because there is a very weird glitch. If there is a ghost, like a, not a attacking ghost, but a sort of haunting ghost, in Ray's room that's actively being spooky and haunting, and you go to the bed and uh, do the... Do you want to go to sleep prompt and you go to sleep while that ghost is still actively in haunt mode it causes the game to bug out um and puts you in the wrong character's point of view so the bug that i'm referring to specifically you're supposed to start a chapter with a cutscene, sort of like one of those mini cutscenes as Ray, but instead you start the chapter as K in the entrance of the mansion. Now, as far as I know, there's nothing you can do about that. The only the only thing you, that can be done is you just turn around, leave the manor, slash wake up, and then enter it again to get a, the uh, game to continue as normal. But, so that's why I said no, like no asterisks. Theoretically, maybe someday, but as far as we know, it's a no. If that makes sense. Alright, so we got a ghosty goo being rather rude. So Miku has the ability to slow time because Miku is actually Neo. 
And because of that, Miku's sections, especially on New Game Plus, are trivial. Because she has the most powerful camera, even though she can't use lenses like the Crush lens. But she has the most powerful camera. She can double shot, so she can sort of charge her camera twice. And because of the festival lens that I have, my camera is always at max charge. Um, and she can slow time. So of the three main playable characters that you have, Miku is by far the most powerful in fights. Rei is the one you play most of the time, and she's the one you play for the ending. And Kay is very, very weak, but he can hide. <laughs> but hiding is slow, so we never do it. <laughs> All right. So you guys, if, you've, if, if anybody has ever seen or played Fatal Frame 1, you should recognize this area. You should recognize all the areas I've been in. All right, where is she? She's over here. Okay. Cool, me. Hi. So this ghost is a ghost named Kyoka. She is going to be a constant appearance in this game. I think you attack, she attacks you three or four times. Alrighty. I'm going to focus for a second here and then I'll explain the puzzle. Left. So this puzzle has a different solution, but it's pretty much the same puzzle that this room would have in Fatal Frame 1. Now, if you've ever played Fatal Frame 1, that door should not have led to this room. <laughs> That's one of the things about it being the manner of sleep and it all being in your dreams. That the areas from Fatal Frame 1 and 2 that actually appear aren't spatially where they should be. So it's just like they stuck random rooms together from the first two games. which you'll see once we get to K as well, because when you play as the character K, you get to see some of Fatal Frame 2's locations. Sadly, you don't get to play as Mio. You get to see Mio, but we don't get to play as her. All right, now I'm going to have to go all the way back to where I got the camera. So in comparison to Fatal Frame 1 and 2, I would say this game probably has quite a bit more backtracking, <laughs> which is a lot of the reason why it is a two and a half, three hour speed run, which also can help lead you get lost way to go down the stairs first. All right, so we're going to leave the mansion here, but then this little ghost lady says, no, your brother's over here because Miku has been seeing visions of her dead brother Mifuyu. And she's going to go chase after him. Which is going to end very well for her. Over here. Alright, so this is the end of the Fatal Frame 1 section. Because through this door, we are back in the actual manner of sleep. The Fatal Frame 3 section. Over here. Don't worry about it. The layout of the manor is not supposed to make sense. Which... Again, also can lead to you getting lost when you're learning the speedrun. <laughs> but I'd like to think that once you do it enough times, it's rather intuitive. Save the two. Alrighty. Now, part of me remembering what I need to do during each daytime section is partially muscle memory. Because <laughs> sometimes I just forget. Oh, we got some more kitchen. We got some more living room Yoshi over there. Some little ghosties. Okay, the cat's not down here. I will get this cat to let me pet them eventually. There is no reason to pet the cat in the game, I'm just determined to finally do so. 
Hello, Miku. She has the cat. Miku? Ray, I'm sorry. I, I don't feel so well. I couldn't sleep. And now we get to see a lovely picture of our next character. And here we are. That ghost that just went past the doorway there, that is the main ghost of the game. Every Fatal Frame game has their signature ghost. That is the signature ghost for this game. Her name is Reika. And the first one who really gets to interact with Reika is poor little Kay here. Hi, Mio. Bye, Mio. So Mio is the protagonist of Fatal Frame 2. Kay is her uncle. And I think not counting the very brief period of time in Fatal Frame 1 where he plays Mifuyu at the very beginning is the first actual playable male character in the game, or in the series. All right. When I speedrun horror games, do I still get jump scared? No, not really. <laughs> I have played so many horror games in my day and speedrun at least a few of them. But at this point, I don't really get scared of them anymore. Hello, Ghosty. Bye bye, Ghosty. Because that's Kyoko. We don't like Kyoko. So we're going to run away from her. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be doing the sort of any percent category of this game. We're not actually going to be doing the good ending of this game. So pay attention to Kay. He's not gonna. He's not gonna have the best time. <laughs> let's let's just say that. Because unlike some of the other Fatal Frame games, this game doesn't actually have a good ending category. The only categories, at least on speedrun.com, that have leaderboards are just for each difficulty and whether or not you're playing New Game or New Game Plus. New Hello, Reika! Bye bye, Reika. <laughs> so even though I'm on Nightmare, Reika's not much of a worry in this game. So there's that at least. What's the bad ending? You will see. And it's more like the normal ending than a bad ending, really. But this is Yashu. She is sort of the main monster ghost for Kay specifically. I'm going to try and lead her over here for safety. Normally I wouldn't do this. But because I'm on Nightmare, I kind of want to make sure to stay away from her. <laughs> All right. Because this entire time, Kay has not actually had a way to fight the ghost yet. Now I do. Did I? Oh! Mm, okay, that's not good. Thankfully, I believe... Yes, I do have one. Yeah. Because this is on, is on Nightmare, the enemies hit like a truck. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to take a picture of this door. Now I have to go all the way back to where I got that holly key. Hopefully not getting hit by Yashu all along the way. Bad ending of this game is Kay has a bad time. 
And now the door that I was at a minute ago just unlocked and we're just gonna run away before she grabs us. Because Reika doesn't like getting her picture taken. Or not Reika, Kyoka. Character's names blend together after a while. I won't let you go. Nope. Don't bug the game. Sometimes if Kyoka is on the screen at trying to attack you when you open a door there. The game doesn't freeze, but it does take its sweet time to actually load the next room. Please. Are there any good ghosts? Um, I would argue that the main antagonist, Reika, is good, but she does try to kill you a few times, so I guess that's not so good. Um... A good ghost, an actual good ghost who stays good throughout the entirety of the game because every fatal frame has at least one, would be the little girl Amai, who you saw when I was playing as Miku earlier. Oh, whoops, I went the wrong way. Another example of what can happen sometimes when you forget which way you're going. There we go. This is going to be a little bit of a tight space here. I think they... Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. Darn it, I thought there was a healing item. <laughs> I thought there was a healing item up here somewhere. I think I'm thinking of something later. All right. I'm just going to pick up this key. All right. So... We're going to be going through a little bit of a tight squeeze here. Because <laughs> Yashu's coming to say hi. But sometimes I can... Ah, I did it. Cool. It's about a 50-50 shot whether or not I make it down those stairs without getting hit by the ghost. But thankfully you can sort of fake her out by going one way and then turn around the other direction. But yes, we got the butterfly key. And if you know Fatal Frame 2, you know that Fatal Frame 2 very much likes its butterflies. So the door that Mia went to is locked with that butterfly key, of course. So now we get to go and see our lovely, lovely niece, which is going to take a minute to get over there. How do I know where I need to take pictures? Uh, by playing this game a lot. Also, don't mind that ghost. Sometimes if you spend too long in an area or you take too long to do something, the game will spawn a quote-unquote random ghost to attack you. It happens more often on a nightmare. But you generally just ignore them and keep going because they don't prevent you from leaving the room, so it'd be too slow to fight them. There we go. And now we are in Fatal Frame 2 land. Hello, Mio. Have you seen your twin sister about? So there's a couple nights in this game where you don't actually go to the daytime daytime section, at least not immediately. Because normally, when Ray wakes up, she wakes up during the daytime. But this time, she woke up during the nighttime. Part of me almost wants to show off this cutscene, because this entire section right here is a reference to uh, Jew on the Grudge, but I won't. Because <laughs> the speedrun's already two and a half hours. Alright, so if you've ever seen Jew on the Grudge, the cutscene that I just skipped was Ray going into the attic and getting jump scared by not quite Kayako, but pretty much Kayako. Hello, Miku. Ray, can you come Thank you for costing me time. <laughs> Miku can appear in different locations in the house. It's pretty much randomized which location she appears in during which day. And some of the locations take more or less time than the, than the other ones. All right. And this 
Spirit Stone Radio isn't actually going to be useful to us until just before the final uh, final night of the game. So. And now we're back as Ray. Go and do some spooky shenanigans. So Ray's job from this point till uh, getting closer to the end of the game is trying to open this big main double doors over here. Now these double doors are what lead to the temple of the manor, where you have the final endgame bosses. But it is locked up by four ghosties. We have to go take out those four ghosties. Yes, yes, yes. The cleaver man really likes his cleaver blood. Okay. Just for safety, usually I don't get this until later in the game, but just for safety, I'm going to grab it now. This is the stone mirror item. I believe it's the same as in Fatal Frame 1 and 2, but essentially if you ever get brought down to zero HP, it heals you up to full. <laughs> Instead of you getting a game over, which is pretty nice. Especially when you're playing on the harder difficulties. Get back! Stay away! No. Don't worry about all of the raspberry jam on the floor. Somebody just tripped when they were going to make a sandwich. This is guy crying about the fact that he tripped while trying to make a sandwich. A lot of jam, though. It's fine. It's just, it's just jam. It's fine. <laughs> we'll go get some of those homunculi from a uh, haunting ground. They can clean it up. I know you know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, haunting ground's a fun game. It's on my list of games to learn. Now, I just remember one specific homunculi from that game that's licking the floor. All right, so we saw the little ghosty goo up in the rafters there. We got to go chase her down because she has the little key that we need. And by key, I mean, we just have to look through a peephole to get another door to unlock. Does it make sense? Not really. Is it what you have to do? Yes. All right, now I gotta try really hard not to get hit here. Because when you're walking on the rafters, you walk slowly. But starting right here, we get attacked by a ghost. And getting attacked by a ghost on the rafters is really just a pain in the butt. There we go. Don't you dare hit me. Okay. It's much safer to attack her from up here. Got her. Now, even though I'm on New Game Plus and I, I hit like a truck because I'm on Nightmare, the enemies also hit like trucks. All right, now we got our second stone puzzle. Now, these puzzles get progressively harder. I would not be surprised if I screwed up at least once. Not this one, but the next one. There we go. First time every time. We're just gonna look through those people and immediately go away. For some reason, that unlocks a door. Video game logic. And I have to go all the way back to the strawberry jam door. Or did I say raspberry jam? I remember which. Anyway, we're going back to the jam door. 
and because of the fact that you can hold the run button in this game to automatically run forward, I don't actually have to hold the directional keys right now, which is nice when you're trying to rest your hand. So there was another... Yeah, it's the Jam Cleaver guy. We won't have to worry about him for another... Three chapters? Ish? attacked in this room we're just gonna ignore them <laughs> anytime you get attacked by any ghost that's not mandatory just ignore them it's not important i'm just gonna swing by here and grab this film could have done it earlier but i forgot that it existed so because of the fact that i don't actually use my quote-unquote film ammunition because I'm on New Game Plus, it is it is a good thing to get more powerful film. It doesn't matter if you're on easy or if you're on normal, but it does matter if you're on any other difficulty setting. Okay. So this is the last time in the game, really, that you're going to be bothering with the entrance area of the manor. We're sort of doing a little bit of a victory lap around the entrance at this point, because we have to go track down these five ghosts and take them out. Most of them are by the entrance towards the beginning of the game. At this point, we're not going to be going this this far back. We're going to be spending most of our time in the back areas. Hear somebody talking and little uh, subtitles appearing. Don't worry about that. That's just Yoshi whining in a room. For the and that's number two. I am playing this on PS3. Fatal Frame 3 has a PS3 version by a PSN, it's a PS2 Classics. It is the fastest way to play the game significantly than playing it over on a PS2. And probably the cheapest way to get the game as well. Because compared to a lot of the rarer PS2 horror games, Fatal Frame's not that expensive. I mean, it's no Kuon, but it is still cheaper to get it digitally, I think. At least until the PS3 store shuts down. But unlike Fatal Frame 1 and 2, the only version of this game is the PlayStation version. So you can't get an Xbox version. Alright, we're gonna see a ghost here and we're just gonna go straight through him. Because the ghost we actually want is all the way down here and as soon as we kill this ghost, we'll get rid of the other one too. Use me. My body. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on that guy. Because the other ghost is around here somewhere. Oh, stay away from me. Oh, there he is. Okay. Now, if this was another difficulty, not Nightmare, I would have been able to take out that ghost in one hit, and I wouldn't have had to keep an eye on the other one. Oh. For safety reasons, I decided to smack him. But... And those blue lanterns that were behind me there, that is actually an exit. So you can, at any time, leave the Manor of Sleep and go to the Waking World again. You can actually just wake up and run around in the main house if you want to. Now, you never do that during the speedrun because that's slow. 
but it can be a way to refill some of your camera film because you do have finite film and it if I recall it does refill if you leave the mansion and come back at least the weaker films do not not the not the really good films that would be a little bit too overpowered Ah yes, Fatal Frame 2 Wii is another expensive Fatal Frame game. But again, as far as I remember, it is not to the level of games like Kuon or Haunting Ground or Rule of Rose. So I do kind of wonder why the horror games tend to be the more expensive ones. Just for safety, I'm also going to swing over here and pick this up, which is the second most powerful type of film. The only film that is more powerful than that is the Type Zero film, and you only get that once, and it's sort of off the way. But we will probably be picking that up as Ray, just for the final fights. So, to answer your question on why horror games tend to be some of the more expensive games, mm -hmm. um, for one, especially with a lot of the PS2 games, they kind of came out near the end of the life cycle. And originally did not sell very many copies. Uh, horror as a whole genre has been rising in popularity uh, quite literally since its inception, pretty heavily. And horror fans tend to be quite devout, so they're really into what they're into. Yeah. So big it combination is. of factors that just all say, hey, Rule of Rose cost $1,000. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is it a thousand dollars now? I thought it was sitting around like six hundred. Did it? Go it up jumps again? all the time. Of course it does. <laughs> I'm just throwing out a hypothetical number, but there's a reason yeah. why these games get expensive. Also, a lot of them tend to have darker subject matter and were more subject to being pulled back in the day, meaning limited releases. Which, it's harder just to obtain. Which leads to oh, I'm gonna I'll finish that thought in a second here. This is the more difficult of these puzzles, and I usually at least mess it up once. There we go. First try, every try. Cool. Now I don't have to worry about that puzzle anymore. So what was I talking about? <laughs> uh, rare horror games and why the they might be expensive. Right, right, right. Um, one of my favorite little horror game gems is the fact that uh, Rule of Rose is banned in the country it's set in. <laughs> so weirdly with Rule of Rose, a lot of people like to bring up a lot of controversies and why it's banned. Rule of Rose isn't exactly banned, but it's also not exactly not banned. Yeah. What that means is you're not going to be beaten to death for owning a copy of Rule of Rose. No. Um, instead, they denied it distribution, so they couldn't distribute copies of the game in the country uh, that it was banned in. Um, and that's how it was like a soft ban. So it just yeah. you couldn't buy the game, but if you managed to acquire the game, it, it wasn't like having contraband. Yeah. Which is the way it tends to be with a lot of... Uh with a lot of horror games that don't get released for content reasons. It's like, you can't get it in the country unless you import it. Um, There's also um, rarity based on location, because yeah. some games, you know, like um, with Haunting Ground, copies in Japan and uh, the EU were much, much cheaper if you bought a PAL copy, because they just sold better over there for some reason. Well, in North mm -hmm. America, people just weren't wanting to buy it, and it came near the end of the PS2 life cycle, and people were already jumping to PS3 at that point, and many devout fans, just people who were buying it were fans, people who weren't, like, people weren't just buying it in general to have it. Yeah. Though that does sort of bring up a very interesting point, especially when it comes to speedrunning, especially speedrunning rare horror titles. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, um, <laughs> when the game is a rare horror title and there's significant differences between regions. <laughs> well, also there's the big thing of uh, regional difference, because uh, let's go with a good example. Uh, we talk about Rule of Rose. Uh, Speedrunning Rule of Rose, uh, if you oh own that game, you can get a really good time <laughs> on the run because there's like five people. Because in the world of speedrunning, there's the whole arguments that you may have heard online from various runners of, oh, emulator versus not emulator. And normally, you know, there's whole ways you can do that. 
but normally what they do is they separate the leaderboard, so emulator runners go with emulator runners, and then console goes with console. So if you want to essentially get a good time in Rule of Rose, physically owning the game puts you ahead of, like, so many people. <laughs> but there's also the fact that Rule of Rose is an extremely difficult run because of the combat. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like this game's length. Can be, but my first attempt at trying to speedrun Rule of Rose took me over six hours. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> like you were, you watched me do it, <laughs> at least part I did. of it. The shrine must be um, but no, I was thinking more like uh, in Kuon, um, for as an example. I can't think of in the, of it being a thing in this game, but in Kuon, the, technically, theoretically. The fastest version of the game to play is the PAL, PAL version. And that's because the PAL version actually had a puzzle removed. I don't yep. know why, um, but one of the early game puzzles actually got taken out of the game, which theoretically makes the PAL version shorter. However, because of the rarity of Kuon and the fact that PAL copies of the game almost never actually pop up on eBay, uh, all of the console runs, except for yours, Tysis, are done on the North American copy. Yep. Um, but, and also there's the theoretical, like, because of the fact that PAL region games are 50 hertz games, and if I remember correctly, they also run a dif different frame rate, um... It might not actually be faster to play the PAL version of the game when you're playing it on console. It is objectively the fastest version of the game if you're playing it on emulator because things like the 50 hertz difference don't matter on emulator. But on uh, console, nobody's ever actually tried it because the game is so hard to find. <laughs> so theoretically, Save the two. if somebody wanted to try and beat my world record on Kuon, and got a PAL copy, they might be able to. Just have a thousand dollars and uh, enough time to grind world records you kill on, and you can do it. <laughs> Maybe not a thousand dollars, because the PAL, even though the PAL version never shows up on eBay, but the few times it does, it tends to go for a bit cheaper for some reason. Um, but yes, the North American version is does go for a grand. <laughs> All right, so now we're playing Miku again, and Miku is going to go do some vent shenanigans. Everybody, Miku is sus. She's gonna vent. <laughs> Karis, what? My rabbit just ran into my bathroom. Okay. Your rabbit vented. Yeah, my rabbit vented. <laughs> um. So one thing that kind of makes me go really game is look at K, Ray, and Miku. Miku is, I'll grant you, shorter than the other two, but in terms of like actual, you know, physical mass, they're not that far from each other, the three protagonists, in terms of actual size. Because Kay's not a big, broad, you know, beefy dude. For some reason, only Miku can vent. <laughs> She's the only one who can go through the vents. And Kay is the only one who can push bookshelves. I don't know why. Um, it's because the game said so. But apparently Miku is smaller than she looks. Right, I'm gonna go over to the ladder and we're gonna meet a friend. Hello, friend. Immediately slow down time, turn around, and hit her with hit her with this. Now if I wanted to really go fast, I would rapidly undo and redo the slowdown effect. Because I do have to wait for the fatal frame chances. But just for safety's reasons, I'm not gonna do that. For safety reasons, we'll just stay in the slow-mo. Miku is definitely the imposter. Especially because I decided to put her in her Fatal Frame 1 outfit. For funsies. Yes, Miku, it's a very spooky room. So spooky. Very tormented. So the hanging bodies do sort of remind me of Silent Hill 2 now that I think about it. Alright, so the entire point of this particular chapter is you may have heard... Hello, Miss Engraver. You may have heard some 
children singing. Now, Fatal Frame 3 goes through the grand old Fatal Frame tradition of having a spooky children singing song. Now, each one of these little orbs that I'm collecting is a portion of the song. And we need to collect all four of the orbs, put them together at the super spooky altar in the correct way in order to play the song. And what this functionally means is that we're going to be running around to the mansion to the same four spots <laughs> to grab an item. Now, you not only have to functionally do this same thing as Miku, you also have to do it as Kay later on. Um, this game really likes to send you to the same locations repeatedly as different characters to grab different items. Which again is the reason why this is a two and a half hour speedrun versus the hour and change that Fatal Frame 1 is, I think? Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I am. No, uh, Fatal Frame One's about like hour ten to hour twenty normally. That's what I thought. Yeah, this game decided it wanted to be a lot longer. I I think in Fatal Frame Two is roughly like still like hour thirty or so. Yeah, but still, <laughs> this game's got an hour on Fatal Frame Two at least. Fatal Frame uh, Five is definitely I know over two hours. Oh yeah. <laughs> Because of the way Fatal Frame 5 is, or Fatal, do you say Fatal Frame 4 or Fatal Frame 5? Uh. I know that 5 is fairly five. long and, yeah. I haven't seen 4 long. yet, but with 5, it is quite long, yeah. Yeah, Fatal Frame 5 is fairly long and that's almost entirely because of the, uh, the way the game is set up. So this game does have a sort of, I call it sort of like a level system, you know, day, night, day, night, day, night, and you can't really skip to another chapter. Fatal Frame 5 just said, hold my beer, and just made it a straight up chapter select system. <laughs> Which kind of makes it hard to do things like skips, especially significant skips. Oh, can you not? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to be safe here. We're just going to do this safely. Normally, I wouldn't even worry about taking out this ghost, but because I am on the difficulty that I am on, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, no, 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 lady. We're not doing this. And there she goes. Yeah, if this was an actual serious run, I would just try and just not get hit <laughs> and hope for the best. Because one strange thing about getting hit specifically on these rafters and specifically by that enemy, because I don't think it really happens every time when you get hit by other ghosts, is your character will like lurch forward. So if you manage to position Miku like I have her now and you get hit from the side or from behind, Miku will actually lunge forward and it's technically faster. But if you get hit twice in by that ghost in Nightmare, it is an instant it is a game over. But you can definitely abuse that mechanic in the other difficulties. All right, now that I've done that little peephole unlock, because that was another one of those look through a thing, take a picture to unlock a door, we're gonna go get ourselves some more stones. They're called purity stones, and they each have a section of the song we need. Fatal Frame 5 is indeed the Maiden of Blackwater. back into the snow area. I'm just going to be running around and grabbing some stones. There we go. So each one of these little red areas, the ones with all of the red paper dolls all over the wall, they are the handmaiden rooms. Now each of the little girl ghosts that you've seen throughout the game so far, they are one of four handmaids. You only ever actually fight 
three of the four because the fourth one is the good girl ghost. Um, but each one of them has their own little room to themselves. <laughs> now, in terms of the storyline, you may be wondering why all of those little paper, red paper dolls along the wall look like they've been stabbed. Well, it's their practice stabbing because the job of the little girl ghosts when they were not ghosts was to stab a priestess. Don't worry about it. It's Fatal Frame shenanigans. That's kind of how Fatal Frame does. Spooky rituals in spooky, usually feudal Japanese of some sort settings. So one thing that can get a little bit um, nerve wracking about this speed run is this hallway. Every time I go through this hallway, it's a little bit of apprehension because if you happened to get a random ghost spawn in this specific room, there's a good chance that your grandma's gonna come to town and smack you. And I mean that literally, the ghost that can spawn in this room is called the Stroller Grandma. <laughs> it is a grandma that has nothing to do with anything in the game, that it has a little like baby stroller that she pushes. And especially on Nightmare, Stroller Grandma can one-shot you. <laughs> and I've only ever had that particular random ghost spawn in that room. So hopefully it doesn't happen. That was a good girl ghost. We like her. I'm gonna pick this up for safety. Right. Yes, the ghost actually- well, I think the ghost name is technically Grandma with Stroller, but I just call her Stroller Grandma. See, here's another example of a vent that only Miku can go into. Even though when you look at the vent from the outside- hello, Ghosty Goo. She absolutely should be able to go through this vent. Or any of the other characters should be able to. No, actually, Stroller Grandma's attack is she runs you over with the stroller. <laughs> and I have lost a world record run to that before. Not even joking. Okay, so we got the last one of the jewels. Now we have to go all the way back to the room that I woke up in for this chapter. Now, thankfully, I have routed this game in such a way that we are, we finish off at the closest possible area. But sadly, we have to deal with these two first. Thankfully, I can just slow down time because again, Miku is, me is Neo. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to. And yes, to answer somebody in the chat, that was indeed rabbits in the background. Their names are Garrus and Tally, and they are very cute. is the other one. Oh, there she is. And now just like before we actually have to wait <laughs> for the ghost to vanish. There we go. Before it'll actually let you open the door. a little bit of the story of this game because the song that we are assembling in this chapter does have to do with the story of the game. So pretty much every Fatal Frame, I believe, at least the main series titles, has a main ghost that goes through some sort of ritual in order to do something. Usually it's related to some sort of hell mouth or afterlife or something. But in this game, you have Reika Kurosawa, who is the main ghost lady, the one who is all blue and chasing Kay around. Now, she's covered in tattoos. And those tattoos are supposed to be super magic tattoos that help people get over the passing of their loved ones. That's actually her in that little cage up there. Now, this song that we're about to put together is supposed to be sung by the little girl ghosts when they were, of course, not ghosts. 
in order to comfort the priestess as they were impaling her. Because, uh, Japanese ghost rituals were hardcore. Don't worry about it, it's fine. All right, now that we have finished the puzzle and we have assembled the song, we're gonna leave. Except we're not gonna leave. I just had to go to the door to trigger the boss fight. <laughs> And of course, she decided she wanted to disappear into a wall because she's rather rude. Ah, right knee. Gotcha! Uh, is she gonna go far enough back? No, okay, good. You only have a very brief moment of time in order to actually do the Fatal Frame heads. Thankfully, it only leaves you a couple seconds for the shot, so... And just like before, we, for some reason, woke up during nighttime because we gotta go say hi to Miku, because we are actually dreaming Miku's dream. So this entire time, Rei is not also running around somewhere in the mansion. No, she is actually going through Miku's dream. Which, they never really explain why she can do that. But at least it means that Rei doesn't have to watch herself do spooky things every night. She just gets to watch her gal pal do spooky things sometimes. Don't worry about it, guys. Just gals being pals. Right, hello, Miku. What do you got for me? Gray? Here. We don't have time to read because reading is slow. Downside is it's a lot of button mashing. <laughs> if you need anything else, just let me know. Okay. Yes, I see. There is there's a letter. Is the cat on? No. Eventually, I'll be able to actually say hi to the cat. I'm determined to actually- Because you can pet the cat! I've just never managed to do it on stream or during a, uh, a marathon run. <laughs> you know what? I got a few seconds. The cat in here? Yes. Okay. Cat. <sighs> the cat has rejected us, chat. Yet again. The only reason I know you can actually pet the cat is because I've seen it done before. Okay, we're gonna listen to these, except we're not gonna listen to these. Because all you have to do is play them. You don't actually have to listen to the tapes. Because for some reason they put the trigger for that at the beginning of the pl of playing the cassettes instead of the end of them. Which is great because it saves you time. And now we're back to Mio! Time for some Fatal Frame 2 goodness. Come on, game. Okay. Decided, Kate decided he didn't want to walk for a second. So if you know Fatal Frame 2, you know this room. This is the Kusabi room. And if you have played Fatal Frame 2, you know exactly the kind of shenanigans that happen in the Kusabi room. And this is the Osaka house? I can't remember the name of this house from Fatal Frame 2, but this is a house from Fatal Frame 2. So just like in Fatal Frame 2, we're going to follow the butterflies. And this is the reason that Ron Weasley and Harry Potter is incorrect. You don't want to follow the butterflies. Reika's in the house. We don't like when Reika's in the house because Reika's an extremely powerful ghost. So we're just gonna run away. There. Should we continue the ritual? 
cool. Gotta take that. Now the little gate door thing to get to Mio required two keys. I just picked up two keys. So now we have to go all the way back to Mio so we can go get our niece back. Hopefully nothing, nothing wrong is gonna happen on the way there. Now we're not gonna go back to that main entrance of the room. I take the side area because it is both faster and we don't alert Reika. You never want to alert the Reika ghost because again, she is very powerful and you do not want to get grabbed by her. In fact, I don't think she's ever an instant kill ghost like in like the ghost in Fatal Frame 1 or 2 can be, I don't think, except for the final fight. But I actually have to click on the door. And a Kusabi. So the Kusabi is a ghost from Fatal Frame 2 that is quite a wisdom tooth, especially in actual Fatal Frame 2, because if I recall, if he actually grabs you, it's an instant kill. Thankfully, they nerfed the Kusabi in this game. He's he's not he's not that powerful. Of course, I am on Nightmare, so we don't want to get hit by him anyway. But I'm going to play this a little safe. Normally, normally I would almost entirely be running near the door to stay near the door as long as possible because we are trapped. We can't actually get out right now. But I'm going to sort of hang a wide berth. Oh dear. Okay, cool. So that is called an evade. If you hit the shutter button or the attack button, for the most part, quickly enough, just as you get grabbed, there is a period of time where you can use the camera shutter in order to stop yourself from actually getting hit. That's what I did there. If I had not done that, that ghost would have taken a large chunk of my HP. Oh, all right, and as you can see, Mew has vanished. Mio has gone to the school of her sister Mayu and learned the ways of vanishing out of nowhere. Okay. Now we get to follow some more butterflies. And just for safety, I'm gonna come over here and grab another stone mirror out of here. Because the characters who need the stone mirrors the most generally are Kay and Ray. I can't think of a moment where you, even on Nightmare, where you'd actually need to have a stone mirror for safety when you're playing as Miku. All right. Well, let's see if I can remember this puzzle. Two, one. Oh, we're lower left. And I do have a cheat sheet for these because it is a lot to remember. And these puzzles are taken straight out of Fatal Frame 2, except they do have different solutions than they did in their games. Hello, Mio! Stop emulating your sister. Except she won't because she just vanished into thin air. So we're just going through some more Fatal Frame 2 sections here. And if you know Fatal Frame 2, you should know the fight that's going to be in this room, even though this is a different game, because yes, they put the same fight in this room. We'll always be together. Well, not exactly the same fight, but a similar fight. Mia? Oh no, a ghosty goo! Except I have, what is, you use the blast lens, you don't actually use the crush lens as K. Me alone. Well, that was not very nice. Oh, hi, hello. Please get away from me. You hit very hard. Oh, well, I'm using the wrong type of film. There we go. And there's the Kusabi. just have to run we're going back the way we came there's nothing that we have to really go get the game just won't go onwards until you keep going and we are being chased by the kusabi but we don't really have to worry about him because k is a fast boy he goes fast enough that we don't have to worry about the kusabi
I see Chad is talking about my rabbits again. <sighs> they are. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I know how there's it is. There's one just chilling in the background right now. Actually, there's two of them. Tally's sort of half on top of Garrus right now. <laughs> oh. sort of sitting on him. Garrus just blends into the background because he's gray. But no, if you want to see more of the bunnies, I mean, you just have to come follow me on Twitch because they have their own dedicated webcam. All right, time for some more phone calls. Oh. This game isn't difficult. I would say it's easy to learn, but it's difficult to master. Is this the home of Mr. Rousseau? Yes, it is. Uh, hi, my name is Kay Amakura. Uh, is you in at the moment? Uh, um, you're... Um, would it be all right if I paid my... So this entire game so far, we have been dreaming from Kay's point of view and judging from what we know from what Ray has said when she's woken up from Mika's dreams, she is also dreaming of this guy named Kay that she has never met. <laughs> So at this point, they have not met. Not only that, but Ray has not contacted him to tell him that her fiancé is dead, so she's been getting letters from this guy, um, from, this from this third protagonist, yet has not decided to contact him in any way, shape, or form uh, to let him know that he doesn't really need to start sending, keep sending letters to her dead fiancé. This game has a fun story to try and unpack <laughs> because of things like that. Alright, so Ray just took a shower. This game has not one, but two shower scenes. Yes, I'm skipping both of them. And I'm going to skip. glitch it. Can I glitch it? Can I glitch it? Come on, glitch it, glitch it. Oh, I didn't. Oh, okay, I didn't get it. So, earlier when I mentioned the um, ability to bug out the game in order to enter the wrong chapter, this is when it would have happened. That little hand that went slithering underneath the um bed there that's a haunting ghost now if i had managed to get around the table quickly enough and was in the correct spot to be able to activate the trigger on the bed and go into the next chapter while that ghost hand was still on the floor it would have bugged the game out and we would have been playing as k right now instead of ray and we would have had to leave the mansion and redo the, and restart the chapter that's why I said, theoretically, there might be a way to skip chapters in this game, but nobody's been able to figure out if if it's actually possible or not. It must not be opened. That priestess, the shrine. Oh, I did the wrong button. He's going to hit me. This is fine. Except I just went right through him, okay. Oh, there he is. For this entire chapter is we just have to defeat this guy twice. We defeat him, we go a couple rooms over, we take another picture, and then we defeat him again. And then we come back to this door and we finish the chapter. It is the shortest chapter in the game, I believe. So we're just going to follow the strawberry jam. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Hopefully we don't get stroller grandma. No, we're just going to get something, a bell dropped from the ceiling, almost giving a concussion to our protagonist. Okay, no stroller grandma. Cool. We don't like stroller grandma. At least not ghost ones. Okay, one thing that I have messed up before is you need to make sure you go south down this hallway, not north, because you have to get to the other side of this room. But if you go north, you don't trigger this little uh, ghost appearance. 
which has caused me to lose time before. But you have to trigger that ghost appearance, or Ray just ignores the little obvious door outline on this wall. You just gotta take a picture of that guy, and that gets rid of the last of the door locks on that main door there. And now we just have to go back there and open it. And nothing bad's gonna happen. And by nothing bad, I mean everything bad. Ooh. No, I think that at least compared to some other horror games, this horror game in particular is a fairly chill horror game to learn. So I would definitely recommend it if you're wanting to get into speedruns, especially if you can deal with the slightly longer length of this game. Because of the fact that there is so much backtracking and you can ignore a lot of the ghosts, it sort of just makes it a chill game to play. Especially if you're playing it on New Game Plus. It is obviously more stressful to play it on New Game when you have to worry about doing camera upgrades, but since I'm on New Game Plus, uh, we have a literal bazooka in the form of a camera, so... The unleashing cannot be allowed to continue. Okay, we're getting chased by a Strawberry Jam Cleaver Man. He is going very fast and being very rude. So we have to teach him to be polite. There we go. He has been taught how to be polite. More blood. And that is the last time we have to deal with that ghost for the rest of the game. <laughs> Alright, now we can get through this creepy door into the final areas of the game. So this is the end of Hour 9, or Chapter 9. And there is... 13 and change chapters because the last chapter chapter 13 does have a sort of faux 14th chapter at the end of it but it's not a real chapter it's just the final two fights and then the credits <laughs> also if you hear anybody if you hear the sound of a wheel turning in my background i apologize there is also chinchillas. And yes, they do have their own camera as well on my live streams. All right, just got to answer the phone twice, if I remember correctly. Because if we listen... Kurosawa speaking. Miko? That's not a phone call. That's Yoshi! <laughs> Yoshi's having a hard time with phones, you guys. Okay, now we just have to sit here and wait. And we get the actual phone call. Hello? Uh, this is Zamakura. Yes, well... Alrighty. And now we are going into the ninth, or the tenth chapter, not ninth, tenth. So if I was to get the good ending, which I believe this is one of the few Fatal Frame games where the good ending is actually confirmed canon, but if I was to get the good ending in this game, this is when I would do it. But that's slow, so we're not. We're gonna get the, we're gonna get the normal or bad ending. Because it's faster. And significantly faster. It takes about, uh, about 10 more minutes. Okay. So that door that Ray opened in the last chapter, as Kate is a little pirouette there, that is where we have to go next. Because now it is time for Kate to do some parkour. 
some very dangerous parkour. He's going to be jumping on some uh, roofs. Totally a good thing to do in a Yukata like that. So anybody who's played a Fatal Frame game before, especially the original trilogy of games, you know what this black and white vision means. Black and white vision in the Fatal Frame games means that you are in danger. Now, in Fatal Frame 1 and 2, it usually means you're being actively chased by an instant kill by the instant kill main ghost. It doesn't quite mean that in this game. What's the black and white vision or the miasma vision? Uh, means in this game is that enemy ghosts are significantly more powerful, but unlike Fatal Frame 1 and 2, it's up to you whether or not you're in black and white vision for the most part. You can get something called a purifying candle that chases away the black and white vision. Now, another thing about the black and white vision is that if I recall correctly, it causes random ghosts to attack you more often. And later on in the game, it causes the main ghost to be more likely to chase you. You don't want that. She is she is very powerful and very annoying if she starts chasing you. Thankfully, we don't really have to worry about that. Because in all of my time speedrunning this game and any difficulty, I don't think I've ever actually run out of a purifying candle once I've gotten one. Because it's been routed in such a way that you're generally able to get through the game before that happens. Alrighty, so we got another pinwheel puzzle here. This one has a very similar solution to the last one. I also have it written down though, because the last thing I want is to do it wrong uh, live on stream. Alrighty. So earlier I mentioned that you only have to develop two pieces of film in the game. The film that I'm about to take a picture of here as soon as I cross this corner, is the second one. Of the three mandatory pieces of film in the game, okay, for some reason decided it didn't want to give it to me, but you only have to develop the first and the last one. You don't actually have to develop the second one. And this is the purifying light I was talking about. It chases away the black and white vision, and we don't have to worry as much about getting one shot by the ghosts. Because especially on Nightmare, I think most attacks on Nightmare when you're in the black and white screen effect are one shots. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. So you have to be very careful. And this is the part where I meant that Kay's gonna do some parkour. Now, I don't know about you, but I would not be able to jump this gap. <laughs> this, this, seems, this seems like a bit, a bit much for a guy, for anybody to be able to jump. <laughs> But K just, he just does it. <laughs> Somehow. I know I would end up being strawberry jam on the, uh, on the dirt down there if, if I tried to do that. He has great leg strength. <laughs> He's an Olympian. <laughs> he didn't skip leg, he didn't skip leg day. Also, aren't the roofs, like, covered in snow at this point? And, like... You know, weirdly, not this one, because look, it, look up, look up. This entire area is actually covered. This is a subterranean area, so this area does not have snow. All right. Um, but it's also tile. Shh, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it's fine. This, does, this game doesn't need to make logic. It's a Japanese horror game. Logic is not involved here. All right, now this is what I meant earlier by the main ghost, Reika, getting tattoos all over her body as part of her, like, special ritual when she was still alive. Now, you may have seen the ghosts attacking me earlier, but I just ran by them and ignored them. They are called engravers. They are the tattoo artists who do all of the tattoos on the main ghosts. And this is going to be the first time that you actually get a good look at them because it's the only time. Yeah, it's the only time in the game where they're actually a mandatory fight.
And they also went to the Fatal Frame 1 school of, ah, oh, my eyes, lady. Because they too are blind. Despite the fact that they're supposed to be making tattoos. Don't worry, it doesn't have to make sense. Most things in this game don't make sense. I didn't think I was gonna get her. Okay. That's one. Now, one thing that is annoying is that you can get hit during these little mini cutscenes. Thankfully, I didn't. There we go. And that's two. So that is chapter 10. We have three and change left. Three more chapters to try and pet the cat. <laughs> One of these days. Hello, Miku. So because this is the second time in the game that we actually have to go to the dark room, we just have to go there. And that's the only thing that you have to do during the daytime, nighttime sections. And as you saw there, there was another little spooky haunting. A little bit of strawberry jam on that bathroom mirror there. Don't worry about it. Clean that off with a little bit of soap and water. Okay. Oh, right. So you can't actually go to sleep yet, because if you try to go to sleep, Ray goes, is that Miku? Miku is singing, so we have to go say hi to Miku, then we can go away and go to bed. But she is getting a little late, so I'll probably be taking a nap after this too. Oh no, there's a ghost in my house. Now that we have talked to Miku, we can go to bed. Except not actually because I'm speedrunning, but... See, once you get that purifying candle as K, every chapter from now on, you're gonna have to worry about the purifying candles. Okay. So we gotta go up there and say hi to that ghost lady who was in that uh, cell cage thing. And one thing that is slightly annoying about this game is this will be an example of for some reason Miku can go through a tiny crawl space door that nobody else can despite the fact they are not that different in size. Because it would be much, something later would be much easier if you could go this way as Rei. But the game says no, you can only go this way as Miku. Oh, um, uh, I forgot to do something. Forgot that we don't go here quite yet. We have to go back the other direction. Again, this is what I meant by sometimes things get a little blurred together in this game when it's this long and you go through this many repeat areas. Yeah. Now this is the first chapter, I believe. Oh, can you not? This is the first chapter, I believe, that you can actually go through that doorway. For some reason, in every other chapter previous to this, that specific door 
is locked. There is no earthly reason that that door is locked. You don't do anything to unlock that door, it just unlocks on its own. <laughs> Which is the reason why I've been taking some pretty roundabout ways to get around the mansion up to this point. But now that that door is finally unlocked, we'll have an easier time getting around. I have to go all the way back to where Kate took that picture, so there's not much to talk about between here and there. Miku, that is a wall. Miku, that is also a wall. Thankfully, you don't really get attacked by ghosts in this area. At least not when you're playing as Miku, <laughs> but... Give me the book! Oh, you're gonna make me take a picture of you, aren't you? Commandment tome. It is not important except in so that it unlocks something. Because <laughs> sometimes Fatal Frame can be allergic to the concept of actual keys. So that area where I went up the uh, ladder on accident earlier, we have to walk all the way back over there. <laughs> and yes, we do have to take the long way. And yes, we are being chased by a ghost right now. Don't worry about him though, he just wants a hug. Just dodging in there before he grabbed me, that's fine. Apparently my bunnies keep freaking the chat out, I see. Alright, now we're back where I'm supposed to be. So, a slight spoiler, this is the last chapter we play as Miku. This will be the last chapter as Miku, the next one will be the last chapter as Kay, and then we'll have the final chapter as Rei. So, unlike Kay's chapter, this final chapter of Miku's is almost entirely about her trying to chase after her brother's ghost. Which, technically there's two ways you can end this chapter. There's the fast way, and there's the return to gals being pals way. We're gonna do it the fast way because it's speed run, you gotta do it the fast way. But this will be, hopefully, if I can pull it off, <laughs> the first instance of a specific glitch in this game that I actually discovered when I was playing it on the PS2 ages back. Hopefully I can pull it off. The second usage of the glitch is easier to pull off than this first usage of the glitch. Wait, oh crap, I forgot to put the book down. <laughs> I almost... There we go. 
Hey, I gotta put the book here. <laughs> Do not forget to put the book on the stand because if you don't put the book on the stand, the door that is above the book doesn't open. Is there a reason why that thing opens the other thing? Not really. Is it how that works? Yes. Okay. So you might want to turn away if you have a sensitivity to light in this room. I didn't think of it, could have warned you earlier, but it is a little bit of flashing. Thankfully, it's the only time we go in here. Now, for some reason, Mika was the only one who can go through that door I just went through. There's no reason why, but she's the only one who can. Yeah. So we got something called the Mirror of Loss. Now, this is a special item to the main antagonist ghost, and we're going to take it to where I fought those engraver ghosts as K. It unlocks the final couple rooms, like the final boss rush area of the game. That you then have to go to that area as every one of the characters in order to get to the credits. But it also does mean it's going to take me a second to get there. Hopefully I don't get attacked by a ghost, but thankfully I don't have to go through the grandma stroller room. I will forever be salty losing a world record run to that ghost. she's being so stealthy trying to sneak into my closet. Oh, right, I have to do the boss fight first. <laughs> I always forget you have to do the boss fight before you can actually put the mirror down. You're about here. There she is. This is what I meant by going out of slow-mo, going into slow-mo, out of slow-mo, into slow-mo. It's just faster to do that, to do the game that way. A little bit less safe, but definitely faster. Where'd she go? There she is. Oh, I need the second head. And there goes Yashu. Now, placing that mirror for some reason opens up behind the altar here towards the end game. Yeah. No one will survive. So we are b back in the black or white vision, so you gotta be a little bit more careful here. We're just trying to get to the bottom so we can get to the final fight as Miku. Now, each one of the characters, Rei, Miku, and Kei, they are sort of taking the place of some of the characters in Reika's life. Miku is sort of going along the same journey as the little girl Amane, the good little girl ghost. 
K is sort of going along the same path as Reika's boyfriend. And Ray is going along the same path as Reika. They're in fact voice acted by the same person, if I recall. It's just interesting parallelism in this game. And this is Amane, the uh, good girl ghost. She let her brother in and disrupted the ritual that caused everything to go wrong and go bad. So really everything in this game is that little girl's fault, but it's okay, she's nice. Oh, come on, that was supposed to be a head. Yeah. That was a head. So I can fight all three of these ghosts now at once, and they like to fly. Because somebody gave them the ability to fly. Thankfully, it doesn't look like they're going to do it in this fight. It's the other fight with them in this same area that happens later where they like to fly around, but... Oh, there she is. That's two? Oh, no, 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 we're not doing this. You are not nailing my feet to the floor, lady. Okay, that should be the last one. And as soon as she goes away. There we go. So one little interesting thing here. Now that is Reika's, the main antagonist ghost. Uh, boyfriend, but if you look at it through the camera, oh, uh, I missed it. Okay, if you look quickly enough through the camera at that character in the camera, it's actually Miku's brother, Mufuyu, from the first game. I'm sorry, but you have to do it quickly enough. I left you behind I'll go there with you. Kind of weird whenever the characters say, I'll go there with you when one of the characters' names is you. <laughs> All right, we have woken up. They just really <laughs> like you. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, just, the character's name is spelled Y-U-U, -U, but it's said the same way. So anytime a character says, hey, you... So we're not technically done with Miku yet. We just woke up because Miku's having a hard time. If I hadn't skipped that cutscene, the second you go into Ray goes into Miku's room, she's surrounded by ghosts. So Miku's having a hard time. But don't worry about it. She's fine. <laughs> Please, you tell me. Am I really supposed to be alive? Somebody in the GDQ chat just made a really interesting point that I never thought of in all the times of playing this game. A Yurei is a type of hostile Japanese ghost, and Rei and Yu's names put together is, in fact, a hostile Japanese ghost. <laughs> I never put that together before. <laughs> uh, things you learn. Alright, so instead of being done with, with uh, Miku like you think would have happened, we are instead getting pushed back into the Fatal Frame 1 section of this game. Now this is where that glitch I was coming in that I was talking about is going to come into effect. Hopefully I can pull it off. I haven't managed to pull it off in a marathon setting yet, so I'm going to focus a little bit here because it's directly after this fight that it happens. I have to make sure I'm in the right spot for it. Fine, whatever. I'm such a jerk. I'm 
not get the glitch off because the ghost is actually won't move. We'll see though. I'll try. Nope, I didn't get it. Okay. You have roughly three frames there to activate a dialogue prompt over at that pedestal. And if you can activate the dialogue prompt in just those couple frames before the screen fades to black, your character gets control in that little section when you're supposed to have control taken away from you, and you're able to run to the other side of the room before the mini cutscene is over. It saves, right there, it saves about five to ten seconds. Um, depending on how quickly you can do it and how quickly you move across the room. Now, there is one other chance to show it off later. Hopefully, I can get it the second time. <laughs> but that one of the two instances of that glitch that I have found, um, it's the harder one to pull off. I only pull it off maybe half the time during runs. Okay, now finally, Ray and Kay have met. And everything's gonna go fine for Kay. He asked us to go get something from our former fiance's room. So we're going to go do that. Now, throughout the game, um, documents will appear on you's desk in here. But since I haven't been in here and haven't done that, they're all sitting on top of each other. So this is the point of the game where I just get to mash the button for like 30 seconds. <laughs> picking up all of the notes that would have appeared there at different points in the game. So now we just have to take that one of the notes that we picked up to K, and we'll be able to go into K's final chapter. Either way, it'll all be over soon. Okay. Now, the entire point of this chapter, in one of the notes that Kay got, it told him how he could bind the priestess by uh, stabbing her with a bunch of stakes, because that's a very nice thing to do some to someone. Now, the way that we go get these stakes, because that's the point of this chapter, is to go grab gather all of them is we have to go to each one of those little handmade rooms. So the handmade rooms are the ones with all the red paper dolls around them. And go get it. Go do a little puzzle, go get some sh stakes, and then uh, go crucify someone. <laughs> Fatal Frame is a very dark series, you guys. Okay, if I can get this... Oh, wait, no, it's right now. Right. Oh, upper left. All right, that's what I was doing. Okay. So much a shadow puzzle. You have to get the shadows to... For there to be no shadow on the stake, and then it, you know, goes off. Oh, hey, a ghost. But for some reason, that ghost only appears when you bring your camera up, and you can't get out of the room until you take care of her. And now they are all flying, because they hate me specifically. going in circles to figure out where the ghosts are, or you could just... Yeah, let me learn! Nope, mister. Oh, there she is. Me! Oh, I barely got her before she grabbed me. Okay. Alright, so that's the first stake. Now we're sort of going to be making a big old U-shape around the perimeter of the manor in order to get all of these.
And this is the fastest way to get to this tank, even though we haven't been through here before. I'm making attack Vegas. Now we're just gonna leave. Don't want to deal with that. This is what I meant by, for some reason, Kay's the only person you can push things. <laughs> Ray can't push that uh, chest of drawers, but for some reason, Kay can. All right. Number two. This one is easier. Oh, lower left, not lower right. There we go. That's stake number two. Or technically, I guess, stake number four, but it's the second one you get. But now this chapter in particular is one that it took forever for me to figure out the most optimal way to go around the mansion. I think I've got it, but who knows? Maybe somebody else will come around and start uh, speedrunning this game and they'll beat my time. I mean, possible. I'd always be happy for more runners for this game. Unlike Fatal Frame 1 and 2, it does have much less runners. Partially because it's uh, one of the less popular Fatal Frame games, but also because it's such a long speed run compared to the other ones. I have survived the stroller hallway without meeting Grandma again. Good. We're gonna have a very short interlude where we have to fight the Kyoka ghost again in here before I'm able to go get the next stake. She just wants to get a hug. <laughs> in the lore and story of the game, this particular ghost has mistaken Kay for her former lover. So she wants a hug. We're not gonna give her a hug. <laughs> There she is. Yes, you will. <laughs> you will let me go because I told you to do so. My child, Konami So, chat, look in the mirror to my right. Do you see something? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just, just keep in mind that little mirror ghost for a second. See, for some reason, Kay can go into this little crawl space, as can Miku, but it's the only one that somebody besides Miku can go into. All of the other ones, only Miku. Okay. There we go. And that is the third one. We have one left. Now, just for safety, I'm going to, excuse me, sir, I'm going to grab this candle. Normally, I wouldn't if I was doing an actual speed run, but just for marathon safety, I'm going to grab that just to make sure. Now, remember that mirror ghost? Hey, look, it's the mirror ghost. <laughs> Anytime a ghost appears in that side mirror when you're going down this hallway, um, 
it guarantees that as soon as you go into that room down there and come out of it, that ghost is going to attack you. It's consistent. It happens every time. going to go get the last stake, which thankfully is by the door that we need to go to after getting the stakes, which is how I've routed out all of these, um, collecting all of these stakes. <laughs> because if you were to get any of the other stakes last, then it would take longer to get back to the store. Uh, that is a door, Kay. You need to go through it. And that's the last one. We can still make Now I have to wait for the game to give me back control. There we go. Now it's time to do the same thing Miku did and rush all the way back to Kay's destiny. And he has a very fiery destiny, Chad. Of course, you have to do a couple fights before you can do that. Picking that up just for safety's sake. Mostly because I can't remember if I picked it up earlier. All right, just like before, now we are going towards this character's end. Going down the same little route. We're going, gonna go through a boss fight at the bottom. And Kay's gonna beat his maker. Not gonna beat around the bush. Kay's not gonna have a good ending, you guys. There are two endings to this game, and you have access to all of them no matter what difficulty you are playing on, unlike uh, Fatal Frame... Or, oh, there it is. Um, unlike Fatal Frame 1 and 2, where the difficulty... or the ending is dependent on the difficulty you're playing on. Excuse me? Oh, there she is. Now, no this room that we're loading into, yep, it is this room. Okay. This room that we're loading into is actually the room, the final room of the game. Not as K, though. <laughs> this is the place where we'll have the final fight against Reika very shortly, because this is the second to last chapter. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We only have maybe mm, 15 minutes or so left. And everybody, we're going to need some Fs in chat for uh, K. Because <laughs> in that cutscene, uh, K got got. <laughs> that cutscene still happens if you're getting the good ending, but if you have an item he doesn't get, uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't get got. But as you can see, he's not napping anymore. Uh, he has turned into a soot stain. Now, in the lore of this game, when... The curse on a person has reached its final conclusion. The character's physical body dies and they turn into a ghost. Hence. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know he died, but it's not very polite to be a guest in someone's house and turn into soot. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. 
just saying, like, that's never going to come out of the couch. I'm, I, actually, I hadn't even thought of that. Okay, so I'm going to focus here for a second, because this is the second instance of that glitch I was talking about. Let's see if I can actually pull it off. Oh, I didn't get it. Okay. Usually I get this one, but you can activate the uh, boombox in the, like, two or three frames before that text pop-up comes up. And, but this one only saves you maybe, like, two or three seconds. So it's not as important as the other one, but... It's not the kind of, it's not the kind of skip that makes or breaks a run because of how ro long this game is. But it is definitely a little bit of stylish points if you can pull it off. There's Miku, she's currently in a coma. Don't worry, she's gonna be fine. I have it on good authority that she's in Fatal Frame 5. All right, now for some reason, all of this stuff has just been chilling in Ray's house this entire time. Now, I think the in-universe explanation for it is her fiancé, who died before the game started, was a folklorist, and he was researching the manner of sleep when he when he died. Um, so he had all of the stuff in his attic. So the earring is interesting. Now, if we had gotten the good ending that would have saved Kay, we would have been getting that little earring in the dream world, and we Kay would have had a dream earring, and that would have saved him during the end of his last chapter. Now, because we didn't have that dream earring, uh, Kay turned into ashes. <laughs> but for some reason, the second of that earring pair is has just been chilling in Ray's house this entire time. <laughs> oh, hey, look, there's a haunting underneath my desk. It's fine. We got places to be. If I see you, I, I don't know. Am, am so I pay attention to, to the bottom left corner of the screen. Because this is something that bugs me every time it pops up and gives me a chuckle. After this black and white ovision goes away. Because there's actually a typo in the name of the final chapter of this game. Or at least the final main chapter, not counting that tiny little bit at the end. There goes Ray's uh, ghosty boyfriend. We gotta go chase after him. I have to see him. I have to find him and be sure. You... I... All right, and there it is. So, they spelled the word tattoo wrong. <laughs> and for a game where tattoos are such an integral part of the game, I will never not get a chuckle out of that. The final, there's a, there's a stroller ghost in here. We are running away. I can totally, I totally heard the stroller grandma there. We're running away from her. Okay. So the entire point of this final chapter is Ray. That mirror we got as Miku earlier, it got shattered and we have to go pick up all the pieces for it. So we have to go to a bunch of specific areas in the manor, trigger these little cutscenes with Reika, and get the mirror shards. My memory, my pain. Uh, Ray, it's on, Ray, pick it up, please. Thank you. You know what? We're gonna be Darren. We're gonna go back through Grandma Hallway. Hopefully we don't get attacked by Grandma. Usually I take the other way around because I think they're about the same distance, but... Here's the second piece. Now normally this is when I would grab the stone mirror if I was playing on Nightmare and doing an actual run. To be with you. But I grabbed it earlier just to be safe. I'm here. I'll always be here. Now this particular piece you sort of have to grab from the side because if you try and grab it head on you end up looking at that tree instead for some reason. So 
The one thing that's helpful when you're learning this particular run and learning this part of it, um, this particular chapter, is those subtitles. I will shatter my um, at least in the beginning, you want to make sure the subtitles are on because they actually fade in the closer to the um, mirror shard that you are. Which does make it helpful if you're struggling to remember your routing. left. Thankfully, the game teleports you once you get the last mirror shard, so you don't have to actually backtrack for once. <laughs> Here is shard number four. And yes, you do have to sit here and listen to it. <laughs> a good time to take a sip of tea, if you've got any. If I could just see you once more, once more, just one more time. Now these stairs are an example of stairs where it's not really, there's no really point, any point in doing the stair glitch. Just to give you sort of an idea of the size of stairs that you don't really care about. It usually is actually slower to try and do the stair skate glitch there because of needing to flick the controller to the side. The last shard. And now we have the mirror again. So from here on, it is just run to the credits. <laughs> there is one, two, three boss fights in a row. Sort of. One of them's like sort of split into two, depending on if you can get a sh quick shot on one of the ghosts. Actually, we're going to do something a little bit safe. So Rake is just chilling over there. Don't mind her. It's only the main antagonist ghost just chilling. But hiding in this little corner over here. Now, you don't have to get this, but if you're learning the speedrun, I recommend getting it at least your first few times going through here. Especially if you're playing on New Game Plus. Type Zero Film. Now, it's only two rounds of it. Type Zero Film being the most powerful film type in the game. It is only two rounds, though. So it's not as useful if you're playing on New Game but if you are playing on New Game Plus, it makes the final fights so much easier when you're playing on Nightmare. Playing on hard as well, but definitely when you're playing on Nightmare. Because, interestingly enough, if you're playing on New Game Plus and you're playing on easy or normal, you can actually one-shot the final boss of the game <laughs> without picking up any film. 
which is a little bit overpowered. But if you're playing on Nightmare, you actually have to fight the final fight. It's over. It's still over with pretty quickly, but it's not over with as quickly. Come on. There we go. That's one. So this door is the point of no return, but for some reason it the game doesn't actually tell you that until you get to the bottom of the hallway. Now just for safety's sake, I'm going to put a save here. Just because the final fight against Reka in this game does have some instant kill attacks in it. So despite the fact that I have a stone mirror, just for safety. <laughs> There we go. This is the actual final bit of the game. I kind of put this chapter and the previous chapter together because you're just, it's one continuous go. We are almost at the end of the game. Let me sleep forever. Get the cutscene because it's slow. Now this is going to take a hot minute to actually get to the bottom from here. When you play as Miku and Kei during their final chapters, the game at least teleports you further down, but when you play it as Rei, the game actually forces you to go down the entire spiral staircase. <laughs> Hopefully I can get a quick shot here in a second. Got her. That's what I meant by the second boss fight is sort of two boss fights because one ghost spawns up here and the other two ghosts spawn at the bottom. The downside, though, is the two ghosts spawn when you're on this little Tory gate, <laughs> which is slightly, slightly less than ideal because you walk slowly over the Tory gates and uh, it can cause you to get in some trouble. Oh, they're being nice for once. Usually they attack me two or three times right against here. Usually I wait until I get to the bottom to try and take these two out, but sometimes if I get a good shot... Nah, I wasn't gonna go for that one. Sometimes you can get a good shot and you can get them on the stairs. There's one. Oh, excuse you. Ah, she got me. This is fine. Or not. He is... Oh, hi! Thank 
thankfully, I have an herbal medicine, so we're gonna use that. And this is why I made that save, because they hit rather hard. I'm gonna save. Just need one good shot on her. There we go. They can't open the door until something pops up on the top right. But you know what, just because we're about to go to the final fight, I'm actually going to do another save here, just in case. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, I get a quick fight against Reika. And soon we'll be at credits. Really just for safety. <laughs> there we go. The game gives you one last long hallway before the final fight. I don't want to see anymore. And this is the room that we saw earlier when we were playing as Kay. Anymore. Thankfully, the game is very nice and will let you get a fatal frame shot immediately during the boss fight. But time will be on the final hit against Reika. Hopefully, it doesn't take that long. <laughs> no one will no one. Okay, the game's being nice to me for once. And time. GG. At least it was under it. Oh, that is the room. <laughs> Whew. All right. So you're going to watch the ending. Mm hmm. So the ending's a little bit long, so maybe we won't watch all of it. Because um, I don't we know. We can how talk much... while it's going. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, that is Fatal Frame 3. It is a touch longer <laughs> than the other Fatal Frame games, speedrun wise, at least the early ones. But um, I would like to give some thanks to my bunnies for being a very good distraction. And my, and my chinchillas being loud in the background. They are definitely very good at ruining world record speedruns, if you would like to see more of them. Um, Make sure to give me a follow at twitch.tv slash MissScarletTanager. I do a lot of spooky games. Occasionally I do JRPGs. I am also the world record holder in Xenosaga. But the rabbits themselves also have their own dedicated webcam. So if you thought the rabbits were cute and you want to see more of them, make sure to give me a follow over there. Um, yeah, I want to say thanks to Dysus for inviting me. Glad to have you. I'm glad I was able to actually do the run. I lost my voice for the most part on Sunday, but I have mostly recovered it. Um, Definitely glad you're feeling better with all that. I know there's <laughs> the... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I live in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon, and we had a little bit of a wildfire smoke problem this last weekend. But it's clearing up, so it's good. So all now right. that... So now that we have put Ray to sleep, or Reika, now that we put Reika to sleep, all of the ghosts and all of the undead spirits can actually travel over to the other side. They never explain what the other side is. It could be whatever you want it to be. It's the afterlife. But since Reika has been put to rest, all of the spirits can now finally go to their afterlives, including the spirits of Reika's fiance. So there's that at least. But that's going to be it for me. 
All right. Well, thank you for doing the run. Glad mm -hmm. to have you. And for anyone who does not know, Miss Scarlet does a lot of fun different runs, a lot of spooky and I guess RPGs as well, given the Xeno saga. Yeah, I do Xeno saga, Kodelka. Um, I like to do rare, rarer, less done games. So your Kuans. Eventually, I'll get a leaderboard um, ranking for Haunting Ground. I just need to learn the run first. Uh, Clock and hopefully, Tower 3. Uh, yeah. And what were you saying? Uh, I was saying hopefully as well, uh, there'll be good luck for you coming at the uh, upcoming AGDQ event. Fingers crossed. Um, I actually have my list. I have all of my uh, submissions, the games I want to submit. They're in a pile <laughs> next to you my desk. You have a physical pile of them. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to have the physical copies in order for, a for AGDQ submissions, so of course. Yeah, That's true. That is true. Yeah, and, you know, here's one of them, <laughs> the game I'm playing right now. But yeah, it it helps keep me honest and makes every time I turn and look on my desk and go, oh, maybe I should practice one of those. <laughs> well, that being but. said, uh, that was Miss Scarlet Tanager. You can find her. I'm sure the link was posted in chat, but twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager. Uh, we are going to be right back with our next and final run of the night. Uh, we have some more Tormented gameplay coming up for you. Uh, but before we get to that, I do just want to say that uh, we're going to be taking a quick wellness break. This is the time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, and all of that. Uh, before we go to that, uh, any subs, Prime Gaming, give subs, bits, or anything like that, uh, does help support GDQ both with Hotfix and for the upcoming AGDQ 2023 cost, so please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily GDQ content. Alright, we'll be right back.